as the time is running, um, I will start. I was asked to, to share some Estonian um, observations about becoming um, um, a member state of EU. We have now been in the EU for 10 years and um, we have um, a reputation uh, to be a very good a pupil. Uh, to study everything on time and fulfill the tasks of harmonization and compliance and and uh, we were uh, quite um, agile to to have euro uh, and so we are in a euro zone and also in Schengen right now um, so starting uh, point could be that there is something about being a small state Ireland is also a small state but Estonia is much smaller we have one point three uh, million people living in Estonia. And small states uh, need to uh, cope with actually uh, the demands uh, of the EU membership, uh, and it's not easy at all. Um, being a small state means um, to prioritize everything, to. Um, uh, we, we cannot afford to go to very deep specialization in each area, so there is more generalized uh, knowledge. And, and experts when, when very deeply specialized. What we need to do, have is really excellent coordination uh, to make all this small country work perfectly. And, and of course, super efficiency uh, in order to use the limited resources. And, uh, and of course, uh, being uh, very flexible and uh, open-minded to adjust all the changes we could face. So, when looking back at these years, when we, we prepared for membership, I was working at that time in Estonian government as Secretary General of the Estonian Ministry of Environment. And I remember very well these times when we needed to process a huge amount of, uh, of legal documents uh, and, uh, and nobody actually asked whether you could have uh, uh, done really proper public consultation or anything like that. It was just... Um, um, not um, reasonable uh, because of the time span. But uh, what happened during that time, I think our small public administration learned very much uh, how to be very, very quick in everything. And um, it was um, a learning exercise also in the sense that we, we learned how to recognize um, all the challenges, how to reorganize ourselves very quickly, adjust to... Um, to new situation, and I think we learned a very valuable asset. It is with strategic agility uh, at that time, and uh, many uh, many big countries are actually struggling with that. Too long decision making processes, too much uh, discussions, and, uh, and no decisions. So we have learned how to do everything in in turbo regime, and sometimes it is uh, hitting us back because we, we can't maybe concentrate too much uh, a small state on every issue. And also we needed to learn after this very high speed of um, uh, European integration uh, how to do properly public engagement, for instance. And uh, but it, it doesn't going to happen on turbo speed anyway. So it's a lengthy and slow process. Another thing what we learned is a very high result orientedness in values and thinking. Um, the only thing what mattered was whether you get the percentage of non-harmalized regulation down and, and keep uh, things up to date. Um, again, we needed to uh, be able to mobilize the very short resources. And um, all that happened in the context of very decentralized public administration. <coughs> so every ministry had its own uh, area where they were the kings, so-called. So there was little intervention into the other ministries' governing areas. Of course, it again meant that we could be very fast, but um, it, it brought along a very low culture of cooperation and coordination, and it is something we are struggling right now. Everybody now is talking in Estonia about uh, single government approach, whole of government uh, feelings, better coordination, and we are not so good at it right now. And, um, and of course, um, it means that we, we now are experiencing difficulties in dealing with wicked issues, which, which are spread across the policy areas. So it was 
some of the experience of Estonian very fast learning and European integration as a small state. Euro European Union has always been a very high political priority for Estonia. There has been no question whatsoever about that. Uh, being geopolitically between Western Europe and Russia was the only way you could make a choices. And Estonia has always been um, pro-European. And uh, it meant that every issue which was related to the European Union uh, was on a very high political agenda. And um, it went through very well. And there was consensus. There were no really very, very fierce debates about that. And what it meant in the long run is that I think we took some time away due to that from our some internal affairs. There were some significant reforms in our country which were lagged behind, which, which still are unfinished. One of these reforms is... Um, uh, the local government reform, we still are having like more than 200 very tiny local government units, which are very difficult to, to run properly and finance normally in order to provide public services. And, um, and of course, um, another big priority was euro. And um, it, was, it was a very rational calculation, actually, for, for going through for Europe, because Estonia had experienced before the economic crisis a very um, quick economic growth, like even two-digit growth numbers. And the uh, economy was boosting, and, uh, and the inflation rate was, was way away of, of my, uh, this criteria uh, we needed to fulfill to get the euro. And the crisis actually slowed down uh, this inflation. And it was like the window of opportunity for us to adopt euro. And um, the economists calculated whether this time will pass. And, uh, and so we needed to get together and, and um, uh, be very timely. And it was a, a very significant instance of a very, very high political commitment. They, they took everything what it needed in order to get euro. They raised taxes, they, they made very many unpopular choices, and also they, um, um, uh, they also uh, cut a lot of public sector costs. But the only thing which actually brought the votes back to the, the same government was actually not touching the pensions. So the votes of elderly people, keeping the pensions up and even growing, was the price uh, Estonian government paid for that. And I think it was a good price, uh, really, um, with no irony. Um, when we think of our role as a small state in the EU, of course we, we cannot do everything, and we need to make choices, as I said. One of the issues and areas where Estonia has tried to um, become one of the leading countries in, in Europe and also in the world is related to cyber security and, and ICT. We are very pro ICT thinking. We we would we love everything related to ICT, and for each Estonian, uh, free Wi-Fi is a human right. And we get really mad when you, you don't have a Wi-Fi which is free in Copenhagen Airport, like I did this morning. Mm -hmm. So you had it in Dublin. So congratulations. Um, so this uh, e-services is not only the question about efficiency and transparency. It is, um, it is also the question about being a modernized country, make use of, of the best available um, techniques and technologies you, you could think of. And also, it has become one part of our economic story to tell. So, you know, Skype is from Estonia and some other um, right, quite uh, quickly growing world-class startups are from Estonia. So we have tried to, to think of ourselves in the future, but why not to become a Nord, Nordic Silicon Valley? This is a long way to go, but this is one of the key agenda points we want to address in the EU. That's why this digital agendas thing and cybersecurity is a big issue. Thank you. <coughs>